Space Shuttle Discovery is on its way back to Earth. The shuttle's two weeks in space comes to an end later this morning when it's scheduled to land at the Kennedy Space Center. For more now on Discovery's mission, we're joined by CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, good morning. Hey, good morning, Michelle. Uh, so how are things looking, Bill, as far as the weather and other conditions for the shuttle to, to land? Well, Discovery's in great shape, but fortunately this is Florida and the weather's not being very cooperative. They've got showers in the forecast and, of course, the shuttle can't fly through rain. So uh, they're going to make two attempts, and if the rain doesn't let them come down, they'll stay in orbit one extra day and try again on Tuesday. And then the second time around, they'll either land in Florida or at Edwards Air Force Base, California. But they got their fingers crossed. You know, this is Florida. You never know until you get down to that moment. Absolutely. Um, now, the landing is going to be a little bit different, and it's a chance for people to get in on part of it. Explain to us exactly what's going on there. Well, you know, ever since Columbia, NASA's preferred reentry trajectory is one that comes from the southwest up to the, nor up to the northeast. In other words, over the South Pacific Ocean, then Central America and the Caribbean. But for this mission, uh, they wanted to give the crew a little bit more time to get all their work done in space. And so they decided to take what they call a descending node entry. And what that means is they're going to be coming in from the northwest to the south southeast. And the result is they're going to be crossing over just north of Vancouver, then down across the heartland of America, all the way to Florida. And of course, as they go through the zone of maximum heating, the shuttle gets extremely hot, up to 3,000 degrees. It's encased in a kind of a plasma sheath, and that produces this string of, of hot gas behind the shuttle. It should be quite uh, spectacular for people who want to get up in the very early morning hours to take a look. That's neat. Um, now you mentioned the work that they're doing up there. How much were they able to complete, and how successful overall was the mission? Well, it was a very challenging mission. They took up about 17,000 pounds of supplies and equipment. They also swapped out an ammonia coolant tank on the station. This was a 1,700-pound uh, tank of coolant to keep the station's electronics at the right temperature. The only problem they really had was a valve in that system failed to activate after they got the tank installed, and so they couldn't pressurize that cooling system. They say that's no major impact for at least a month, uh, but eventually the station astronauts are going to have to do a spacewalk uh, to put in a spare tank of nitrogen pressurization gas. But other than that, a very successful mission. NASA is very pleased with the results. Uh, now, time is ticking, and I understand there's um, very few uh, missions left before the shuttle program is shut down. So what's left, what to accomplish, what's next, what are we looking at? Well, there's only three flights left after Discovery lands, and of course the next one is right around the corner. If all goes well, they're going to roll the shuttle Atlantis out to the launch pad overnight and get it ready for launch on May 14th. All of these final three flights are basically space station resupply missions. They're going to be delivering some science equipment, and on the last flight, they're going to take a cargo module that actually came down or will come down aboard Discovery later this morning. They're going to outfit that to make that a permanent attachment to the space station, kind of as a, as a permanent storage room for spare parts and, and equipment. So three flights left after this one. After that, no one knows. You know, everybody's waiting to see. Perhaps NASA will get one extra shuttle flight. Maybe not. Uh, while the nation switches gears here and gets ready for this long period uh, where we're going to be relying on the Russians to launch our astronauts to and from the station. And, Bill, we have just a little bit of time left. Tell me, what was the reaction to President Obama's announcement of his plans for um, manned missions and, and space missions? Well, you know, the major thrust of the Obama administration's plan is to shift launches over to the private sector, and that's what I meant a moment ago by having to wait until the U.S. companies step up and build some rockets to get going again to the space station. You know, the reaction here at the Kennedy Space Center, I think, was, I'd have to say, tepid, if not negative. Of course, here is a special case because some 7,000 jobs are about to be lost when the shuttle program is retired. And there's very, uh, a lot of uncertainty out there about how many jobs will come back with this switch over to private industry. Uh, I think folks have a wait-and-see attitude. They're hopeful. The president was encouraging in his words, and NASA is getting some extra money. Uh, but here in the near term, it's going to be a pretty tough couple of years. All right. CBS News space consultant Bill Howard. Bill, as always, thank you.